I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a math problem for the DAP. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator and the author of the DAP Destroyer book and the Orgoman products. I'm here today with Professor Blois. He's our math scholar and he's going to go over a problem involving distance, velocity, and time. And many of these questions appear on the DAT exam and a lot of students have difficulty with them. So there's no one better than Professor Blois and he's going to show us the mechanics of how to attack these type of problems. All right, Professor, I'd like you to give us a hand and okay. show us what you got. Absolutely, Professor Blois here. Let's read the first problem together. A ship travels along the river in the direction of the river's current. The ship's downstream velocity is 40 miles an hour, its upstream velocity is 20 miles an hour. Now the reason for the difference in these velocities is that when the ship is traveling downstream, its velocity is its velocity in still water plus the velocity of the stream. When it's traveling upstream against the current of the water, its velocity is, is its velocity in still water minus the velocity of the stream. Okay, so let's assign a couple of variables. The first question A here is, what is the ship's velocity in still water? So we're going to label that as V sub S. And what is the velocity of the stream? Let's regard that as S. Okay, so let's uh, write down uh, in the direction of the river is current. So the downstream velocity, which is 40, will be re represented by the ship's velocity in still water plus the velocity of the stream. And the upstream velocity, which we know is 20, is going to be the velocity of the ship minus the, velo the velocity of the ship in still water minus the velocity of the stream. Okay, so we want to know what the velocity of the, uh, what V sub S is, the velocity of the ship in still water. Let's take these two equations and just add them together. On the left side, 40 plus 20 is 60. On the right side, V sub S plus V sub S is twice V sub S, and the S's conveniently cancel out, S minus S. So what do we have here? We have uh, V2 times the velocity in still water is equal to 60. Therefore, the velocity in still water is 30 miles per hour. Okay, there we are. Now, what is the velocity of the stream? Well, that's easy to find out. All we have to do is take one of these original equations, like the first one, V sub S plus S. Well, we know V sub S is 30. 30 plus S is 40. Well, very simply, S is equal to 10, and that solves our problem, our part B of the, uh, of the question. All right, now let's move to a second problem, slightly more difficult. Let's read it together. A boat travels 60 miles upstream along a river from port A to port B, and then downstream back to port A again. If the round trip takes nine hours and the velocity of the stream is five miles an hour, how fast uh, does the boat travel in still water? So again, we're looking for V sub S. So here's a little diagram. The boat travels from A to B. The arrows indicate the direction of the stream. If it, as it goes from A to B, it's traveling against the stream. Therefore, it's going to be slower by an amount S, by, by an amount five miles an hour. And as it goes back from B to A, it's traveling with the stream. It's going to be going five miles an hour faster than it would in still water. Okay, now, in these problems, this is a classic distance, velocity, time problem. And the basic formula to use is distance equals velocity times time. And that's pretty much intuitive, right? If you're going 30 miles an hour for two hours, your distance is 60 miles, right? 30 miles an hour, two hours, 30 times two is 60. What's less uh, intuitive is the algebraic rearrangement for that. We get an expression for time, which is distance over velocity. And we, we're going to see that as, we, as you do a number of distance, velocity, time problems, this formulation for time is going to be used uh, uh, rather frequently. Okay, so let's look at this problem. It tells us that the round trip takes nine hours. What does that mean? That means time up time upstream plus time downstream is equal to nine hours, all right? Now we're gonna express each of these times in terms of this peculiar notation, distance over velocity. Well, the distance, the velocity upstream is going to be the velocity in still water uh, minus five, and the velocity downstream is gonna be the velocity in still water 
plus five because it's traveling with the, with the current. All right, so now we're gonna have D over V plus D over V is equal to nine. And this is gonna be distance upstream and velocity upstream. So the distance upstream we know is 60 miles. And the velocity upstream is going to be v sub s minus 5. v sub s minus 5. Okay? Now we go downstream. The distance downstream is the same, 60 miles. But the velocity downstream is v sub s plus 5. And the total is 9. Well, here we have one equation, one unknown. It's totally solvable. I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to outline what the standard mode of solution is. We're not going to pursue that, but how would we solve this problem? We would take the LCD of all the fractions involved, which is V minus 5 times V plus 5, and multiply each term by that expression, two on the left, one on the right, and solve from there. Now, that gives you a quadratic that involves factoring. It's, 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 it's one way to do it, but there's a far easier way. Here's a, 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 a problem that gives you the opportunity of guessing, of using the selection of answers to help you guess the problem to bypass a lot of this detailed work. Let's guess at what the value of the velocity might be in still water, V sub S. Let's say we say, uh, let's make a guess. Uh, we're going to guess V sub S is equal to 10. Okay, so let's fit it into the formula and see what we get. 10 minus 5 is 5. 60 divided by 5, that would be 12 hours. Well, that's all, that already exceeds 9 hours, so it can't be, the, the, still, the velocity in still water can't be 10. Okay, uh, this is assuming that we're given integer solutions. Okay, we're looking for nice, evenly divisible numbers. Let's now, let's try another guess. Let's say the velocity in still water is 15. Okay, so uh, 15 minus 5 is 10. 60 divided by 10 is 6. And for the uh, downstream velocity, velocity uh, if, if we guess 15, 15 plus 5 is 20. 60 divided by 20 is 3. And bingo, 6 plus 3 is 9. So therefore, we just by the process of guessing, the velocity in still water is 15. We would have gotten the same thing had we done all this algebra, but here's where it pays to guess and use the answers as a guide to guessing. Oh, there we are. Very good work. Professor Blois used a technique that I often show my organic chemistry students. Remember, the answer is there in front of you. So many, many times you got to just look at the choices and then use those choices to work backwards. Especially on this math section, time is very important. So you wouldn't have time to right. fool around doing um, a quadratic equation yeah. or anything. Right. All right, I hope this helps. This was an electrifying problem. Um, right. I think you outdid yourself on this one. I I All right, I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you next time and we'll be doing some more math. Good day to you. Bye-bye.